Hi, welcome to educators.com. I'm Shravanti, Hadoop instructor. In this module, we are going to discuss about what is Hadoop, how Hadoop is solving all the big data challenges, evolution of the Hadoop, Hadoop core components, what are different types of Hadoop distributions? Difference between RDBMS and Hadoop. And finally, Hadoop ecosystem components. What is Hadoop? Hadoop is an open source framework. It is by Apache Foundation. Everybody can download it is for free. And internally, this Hadoop framework is written in the Java. So the main purpose of Hadoop is developing the distributed application for processing a large data sets on a commodity hardware machine. We'll be understanding in next slide what exactly the meaning of the commodity machine. And in the previous module, we discussed about the big data challenges like storage, cost, processing speed, data loss. So to solve all the big data challenges, the Hadoop is a single stop solution. So how your storage is going to be solved is nothing but in Hadoop, it supports huge volumes of the data storage. That means Let's assume my organization is smaller right now and I started up with some 50 computers and in next year my business has been tremendously popular so I wanted to add the few more machines so I can change it from 50 machines to 100 machines so there is no storage limitations at all you can simply add the additional machines to store n number of the data. And the next challenge is cost. Here Hadoop is very cost effective because whatever the machines we are using for the Hadoop are commodity hardware machines. Commodity hardware is nothing but it's a kind of cheaper hardware. A low cost machines, low cost hardware. So due to this low cost, your entire Hadoop setup will be very cost effective. And you might be having a question that these machines are the commodity and low cost hardware machine. So how about my data loss? Is if the machine is down, I'm losing all my data. So how far my data is safety is nothing but here in the Hadoop, whatever is storing, it is going to be stored three times. There is something called a replication factor. So by default, this replication is thrice. So because of this, in case one of the machine is going down, still your data is safe and it will still be available in the rest of the machine. That is how Hadoop achieves the fault tolerance. And next, horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling is nothing but, in case if you are having a 50 machines right now, and if it is not sufficient, you wanted to add more, you can simply scale up your system. You can add more machines. That is what we call it as a horizontal scaling. And finally, how the processing speed is. That is, the Hadoop achieves the parallel processing. That means, if a single person is doing a work for 30 days, if I assign a 10 persons to do the same work, it is going to be come down and the work is going to be finished in three days itself. That is the power of processing, parallel processing. So because of all these features, Hadoop is so popular when you compare with the other big data framework. Evolution of Hadoop. You see this diagram? In 2003, Google has published a paper on the Google file system. So Doc Cutting is the person behind the Hadoop. He has taken that paper as a basis 
and he has implemented Hadith. And the same person was hired by Yahoo. So Yahoo is the oldest and first companies which implements are Hadith. And after that, Facebook also came into the picture and it also started using the Hadoop. So Yahoo and the Facebook are having the biggest uh, Hadoop clusters in the industry right now. And after that, if you see this in the middle of the 2008, Cloudera was founded, that is the distribution. So we are going to see in the next couple of slides what exactly these distributions are. Mapar, Hartenworks, you can see all of them. We are going to talk about in detail about all these distributions. Hadoop core components. If you see this, we have a mainly two versions of the Hadoop. Two releases, the Hadoop 1 and Hadoop 2. So if you see any of these things, HDFS is common layer. What exactly meaning the HDFS is? Hadoop distributed file system. This is the place where all your data is going to be stored. This is mainly for your storage purpose. On top of this layer, you are having a processing framework. Processing framework is nothing but if you wanted to take some decisions on the data, what is stored as part of your HDFS. So with the help of either MapReduce or YARN frameworks, you can process your data. So in the Hadoop version 2, we have come up with YARN. YARN is yet another resource negotiator. So we will be having a separate resource management framework and also the processing framework. In the latest versions of the Hadoop version 2, you can even run the previous version program itself. And apart from that, even you can run the other frameworks such as Apache Giraffe or Spark. Such kind of the frameworks also you can run on top of your YARN. Apart from this, we do have a lot of differences in terms of and new features in terms of your HDFS, in terms of your MapReduce. In further modules, we are going to discuss about your version 1 and version 2 differences in detail. When it comes to the Hadoop distribution, these are the top Hadoop distributions are Cloudera, Cottonworks, MapR, and IBM BeginSight. And apart from this, your Amazon Web Services also provides the Elastic MapReduce. Even the Microsoft Azure also provides the HD Insight. These are all the distributions. What exactly the distributions are nothing but? Whatever the core component we have seen, they are going to take that as a basis. And including that, they are also providing the additional features to manage your uh, cluster easily. That means, in terms of your Cloudera, Cloudera provides something called a Cloudera Manager. And Hartenworks provides something called Hartenworks Ambery. So these are all the cluster management tools. Suppose if you are having a hundred computers in your uh, Hadoop system, if you wanted to manage your hundred machines, that will be very tough without the man, without uh, any of these automatic tools like a Cloudera Manager or Hortonworks Ambery. To make our life easier, these Hadoop distributions came up in the play, and if you want to use that. The Enterprise Editions, you have to purchase the Cloudera Enterprise Edition. Even the free edition, standard editions are also possible or available. You can download and try it. And, but mainly in the production, we will be purchasing the Enterprise Editions. Hambury is free. And also these distributions provides your certifications as well, like Cloudera certification for Hadoop developer or Cloudera certification for Hadoop administrator. Similar way, your heart and works also having a popular uh, certifications on the development and administration. What are the difference between our traditional RDBMS and Hadoop? 
So in terms of the data size, your RDBMS is capable of storing the data maximum of some gigabytes or terabytes. In case if you are having a more data than your terabytes, your RDBMS is not sufficient. Where in case of your Hadoop, your Hadoop is capable to store any kind of the data, any size of the data, like including your terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, and more. In case of the updates, RDBMS provides your read and write multiple times. You can create a table, you can update a table, you can do n number of the time. But where in case of the Hadoop, your HDFS mainly follow write once and read multiple times policy. And what about the response time? In the RDBMS, you can get the query response in the milliseconds and uh, or in the seconds itself. Where in case of your Hadoop, it will take little time. It may be in the minutes and it has the latency. And in terms of the structure, RDBMS is having the static schema. That means the schema is fixed. You will not be keep on updating your uh, uh, table schema. Where in case of the Hadoop, it will be having the dynamic schema. The schema changes frequently. In terms of the access, RDBMS is interactive. If you execute a query immediately, you can get the result. And where in case of the Hadoop, Hadoop is mainly for the batch processing due to its latency as well. Scaling. In terms of the scalability, if you want to add more machines, you can do a horizontal scaling as part of your Hadoop. But where in case of your RDBMS, you cannot do a horizontal scaling. It is non-linear. And where in case of the Hadoop, it is horizontal scaling is available, you can scale it up. That is linear. Hadoop ecosystem components. The reason why Hadoop is so popular is due to this ecosystem components as well. The reason is it provides the features to all the Hadoop, all the uh, programmers. Suppose if you are a Java developer or Python developer or any kind of the programming background if you have, you can use the MapReduce framework to write your program. Let's assume you are a SQL uh, expert writing a query. Then we have something called Apache Hive. With, with the help of this ecosystem component, even the SQL experts can easily write the program in the Hive. Similar way, let's assume you are uh, some scripting expert. Then the pig will be very easy for you. Like this, for all kind of communities, Hadoop provides UV solutions. So in terms of the Hadoop ecosystem components, if you observe, the down layer is the bottom layer is the HDFS, Hadoop distributed file system. With the help of this, you can store all kind of the data. On top of this, you are having either YARN or MapReduce. This is a framework. You can write anything like a MapReduce programs or anything to process your uh, data. On top of this, we have a lot of ecosystem components called a hive. Especially this hive was mainly to write the thing over the SQLs. You can create the table, you can write a select statement, you can do a insertions, deletions, all kind of the things you can perform in the hive. It looks similar to your SQL because here we do use a special language called HQL, Hive Query Language. With the help of this, you will be processing the data, whatever is there in your HDFS. And this was evolved from Facebook. And where in case of the pig, this pig is from Yahoo. And it, it is having a simple command. If you want to load the commands, you are having a load command. If you want to filter something, you have a filter command. If you want to navigate across the record by record, you will be having a for each generate command. 
you want to store it store command like this with the help of the simple commands you can implement this data flow language which is pig and apart from this we have scoop scoop is mainly to load the data from your any of the rdbms it may be oracle mysql sql server or postgresql any of the rdbms to hdfs i wanted to load my data in that cases you can use the scoop and load the data into your hadoop similar way we also are having a fume the fume ecosystem component is mainly to load the data from streaming data that is continuous amount of the data which you are generating you can load it into the hdfs for example you wanted to load the twitter tweet or else you wanted to load some web server logs which are generating continuously so you can use the flume to load them into your hdfs and also we have something called a zookeeper and this works as a coordination service and here we have a uzi uzi works like a workflow engine and also we have a mahout for the machine learning and r connector is for the statistical analysis and hbase is no sql database similar to your cassandra mongodb how these are no sql databases similar to hbase is also another no sql databases on top of your hadoop In top, you can see something called Ambry or Cloudera Manager or whatever. So, with the help of this, what you can do is you can manage entire things. You can install it in n number of the machines. You can monitor them. You can do all such kind of the cluster management things with the help of your Ambry or uh, Cloudera Manager. So, as part of our course, we are going to discuss in detail about these uh, ecosystem components like Hive, Pig. you the all the ecosystem components which we will be discussing summary in this module we discussed about the hadoop is a open source framework written in the java it is a freely downloadable everybody can download and use use it and it is from apache foundation and mainly the hadoop is for developing the distributed applications which stores and process the huge amount of the data and we are having hadoop distributed file system is for the storage and the map reduce or yarn is for the processing framework these two are the core components of the hadoop and cloudera hortonworks mapr ibm begin sites these are the popular distributions apart from this we do have a lot of other ecosystem components which with the help of this we can implement the hadoop solutions very easily there are few hive pig scoop fume zookeeper uzi and there are many more and they keep adding to your hadoop ecosystem components every now and then thank you Let's catch up in the next module.